Hi, I'm Brian Levy. I'm a partner at Manchester Living and the host of the Manchester Living Podcast. The purpose of the podcast is to help people navigate the complex maze of elder care. And there's a lexicon of elder care terms on our website at manchesterlivingpodcast.com. Today's new and noteworthy. Let's get to it. Edith and Eddie, age 95 and 96, America's oldest interracial newlyweds. Roll the clip. Beautiful, beautiful place. It was love at first sight. The newlyweds, Eddie and Edith. That's the color of the skin, but the heart. That's what we decided. No, I don't want to go. She don't want to go. I don't want her to go. They think they will wear us down, but they're not going to wear us down. The objective is to separate Mom and Eddie and me and put them into an institutional situation. She's coming with police. You're evil. Did you want to come downstairs? You're doing the evil line. play. You did her ear. You'll never forget it. The trailer doesn't do it justice, but it is chock full of drama with a lottery, uh, interracial marriage, guardianship. It's a must see. So I had to show that. All right, let's jump in. Today we're talking about two of my favorite subjects, home health and private duty. People often confuse the two and they are not the same. So I'm excited to jump in on this topic with my friend and colleague, Sarah Bias with Cambridge Caregivers and Julie Drinkwater, physical therapist and rep for home, uh, let's see, higher standards home health. Yes, I Thank work you. on community development now. Oh, wonderful. Um, thank you, Brian, for having me on the show. I'm really glad we're touching on this topic because it's really confusing with home care and home health care that are both in the home. So Absolutely. we often get phone calls that are really meant for you guys, and I'm sure you guys get phone calls that are actually meant for us. Sure. So if I were talking to you and trying to explain to you what home health care is, it's anything that requires you to have a skilled service in the home, a medical need for it. We do need a physician's order as well. And those services would include physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and nursing. Right. You also would have to be homebound. And the definition of homebound is not bedridden. It just means that it's a taxing effort to get out of your home. It may require you using a medical device, assistive device, such as a walker or a wheelchair, or you might need another person to help you when you get out. Homebound with medical needs, not homebound because you're an introvert and enjoy quarantine. Correct. Got it. Correct. All right, Sarah, what is private duty? Private duty is basically care for you wherever you are. It could be in a hospital, rehab, nursing home, in your own home. We could provide all of their ADLs, which is activities of daily living. We work from four hours to 24 hours a day. Um, some of the things that we do is bathing, dressing, escorting, we could handle medication reminders, transportation, white housekeeping, meal prepping, things like that. Walking their dog if they need it. It's anything that's non-medical we could do in their home or wherever they are. So I guess the main the main takeaway is home health is medical, private duty is non-medical. Correct. Got it. Julie, what are some of the challenges you're faced with from the home health perspective when people are being discharged from hospitals or rehabs? Yes, we do come across some challenges. Most of the time, I would say, we have to assume that the patient's never heard of home health care services, doesn't know one thing about it. They might be terrified to go home and not know what's going to happen. And sometimes we're dealing with the patient. Sometimes we're dealing with a relative who, or a child that might live out of state. So I would say the most important part of this whole thing is communication. So it's the case manager's job to refer them to a home health care service and explain what we do. And then it's our job to follow up with that patient and tell them the same thing, what exactly to expect and level set expectations because sometimes they're getting, you know, excessive rehab three hours a day in the 
of rehab in the in the facility in the facility or, yeah. and then they come home and they're all expecting the same exact care so medicare only covers two to three times a week for us and i just want to clarify that our company only takes traditional medicare i'm not speaking for insurance on this so when they come home we will send out a case manager and they will determine how many times a week for that specific patient and it's all customized for the plan of care for that patient Got it. And just to level set expectations with the relative, with the patient, and ourselves that we're all on the same page. Right. It's really the biggest thing. Communication is yes. key. So what are the, some of the challenges you face on the private duty side? Um, that the client her, themselves don't want care in their home or, you know, they think they're losing their independence. That, you know, a lot of times we take care of people with a broken hip or, you know, Dementia. Dementia, exactly. Yeah. And they don't want, they feel uncomfortable with someone in their home. But, you know, after they give us a day or two, they, the caregiver becomes their friend. So I, sometimes I use the uh, the example to, to clients or prospective clients, this isn't for you, it's for your adult children, for right. their peace of mind. Well, and I tell them that, you know, we're not trying to take away your independence, we're trying to help you heal. And, you know, after you heal and you're able to be by yourself, then you could go back to being independ independent again. We don't want to take that away. Got it. We're there to help. So let's talk about frequencies of visits. I know that... Before oh, we get in that, yeah. I wanted to chime in. I would say another challenge is when the child is adamant that their parent needs this PT or OT or whatever skilled service and the their parent does not want it. That's another whole thing in itself because it really comes down to that the patient makes that final decision unless there's cognitive issues. That's another challenge we face. Great. Um, Julie, elaborate a little bit on the frequencies of visits. You touched a minute ago, but so what if yeah, if a person is coming home for their home health first visit, we will send a case manager out for the first evaluation, which is the most important because every patient is different, and they will take a look at what's recommended on the doctor's orders and then perform a thorough assessment and evaluation. And they will come up with their own frequency and duration. Usually we work within a 60-day episode. And we also find that the sweet spot for any real improvement is at that 60-day mark. But Medicare, again, only covers two to three times a week. And each visit is about an hour or less, depending on the circumstances. But for how long? What What's the well, max? Can someone be on home health for two used, years? It used to be that way. It used to be very yeah. different before they passed a law that requires us to have, we have to have room for improvement. We set goals. And if you're still, you know, moving towards those goals, you can continue. But if you've plateaued, if you have a decline in health, if there's non-compliance, then we do need to discharge. So how does private duty fit into the mix when you first are engaged with a family? They're on, they, they, they're so they're on, on with on home health, health and then private duty engages. Well, I think a lot of the clients that are on home health need private duty because if they need rehab and they're not strong enough to stay in the home, you know, or, or if they're getting physical therapy in their home, they're homebound. So they need private duty to help with bathing. Um, and also, once if my caregiver is there when physical therapy is there, showing doing exercises with the patient, we could continue that exercises. So they're not just getting it an hour a day when physical therapy is there. We could continue to work with with their exercises with them. That's very helpful for us. Yes. Yeah, no, continuity of care is yes. vital. Well, um, it helps the patient, too, get stronger, and they're being active all day long with the physical therapy they want to be. For sure. Um, Julie, can you send a certified nursing aid um, or home, home health aid without needing other services? The short answer is no. <laughs> we would need to have a medical need for another skilled service in the home in conjunction with that. Usually when we send a home health aide out to the home, it's a patient's coming out of a hospital or a rehab, and we go in to help, you know, help assist in the beginning, but more importantly to educate the patient or the caregiver so that we can come on the front end and not stay for a long time. Now, if they do need an extended period, that's where home care comes in. What would a potential patient need in order to get home health services in their home. You mentioned a doctor's so, order. Yeah, a doctor's order. It can be a PCP. It could be a physician in a rehab or hospital or any type of doctor. We do need an order. There needs to be a medical necessity for those skilled services that I mentioned. And we always keep in touch with the PCP no matter what. And we do follow-up progress notes. And again, they need to be homebound. And then you share those clinicals or the information that you have on that patient with a private duty liaison. So we're all working together. If you guys are working with us, correct. Got it. What exactly are home health care services? 
So we've touched on what these skilled services are, but I'm going to break it down into detail. We have PT, which is physical therapy. That's what I used to do in the home. And we do rehabs. It could be post-surgeries. It could just be joint pain. And we work on getting back the range of motion, getting muscle strength back. We can work on gait training, fall prevention, and transfers. And then there's also OT, which is occupational therapy, zones in on more fine motor and getting back to ADLs, which is your normal activities of daily living. So that kind of helps with private duty, with cooking and whatever they might need. And then we have speech therapy, which works on cognition and language. We actually have a specialist, a specialist, what do I call her? A speech therapy uh -huh. specialist who works on programs specializing in LSVT and Parkinson's and memory care. And finally, we have nursing, which includes many things, but just to touch on some, medical medication management, vitals, monitoring the vitals, wound care, IVs, and many more. And on the private duty side, services that are provided, and I understand you can go all the way up to some skilled, some nurse delegated tasks as well. Will you elaborate on that? Yeah, so we have CNAs and caregivers that could do the non-medical needs. Um, like I listed before, anything that they need, non-medical in their home, wherever they are. And then we also have LVNs and RNs are available if they need nursing care. And for nurse delegated tasks. Yes. And that doesn't, we don't need orders from that physician. It's private. They would have to, it's private pay. Got so it. we don't need a nurse or a doctor. So when someone's discharged from a hospital or rehab and mm -hmm. they get home, what is your goal from the home health side? Our true goal is to prevent them from going back to the hospital and, you know, they're living in their own home, which is really convenient. And our whole goal is to prevent them from going back, but we want to get them back to their independent self in that home in a safe environment. And for the private duty side, I guess the goal is ongoing. You're, you have a finite time to work with that patient. On the private duty side, the world is your oyster, right? Yes. We're there four hours to 24 hours, whatever they may need, and we could help them you know, like I said, with physical therapy or just being a companion to them. I mean, some people have lost their spouse. They're lonely at home. They need, they, you know, they want that companionship because sure. their, kid, their adult kids are working and they're by themselves. They've lost friends. So how does, how's, how are you compensated with regards to home health and Sarah with regards to private duty? How does the patient pay? Well, in our, in home health care, if we do have a physician or a doctor order, Everything should be covered by Medicare or insurance. That's okay. why we go by the guidelines of two to three times per week. Got it. And for private duty? How? It's private pay or we take long-term care insurance. Got it. And that's just typical industry standard. Right. Wonderful. This is also interesting. Julie, what haven't I asked you that I should? One thing I did want to touch on, and it's been there for years, but it got even worse with COVID, is we're talking so much about the physical benefits of home health care and even home care, but we haven't touched on mental health. And I find that us going into the home, it's mo it's so much more than just a physical benefit. It's actually, we become f almost family to them. We get to know them. And I used to work as a PT, so it's a companionship thing. But some of these people may not see anyone else all week except for the clinicians that go to see them for home health or home care. So it is even more important to just, you know, I used to go in and see this old man that I really bonded with as a, when I was a PT and I'd come in there, we'd chat about current events while he's doing his exercises. And it was almost like a therapy chat. And then I would see his, you know, he'd get his laundry delivered. I'd say, oh, can I hang that up for you? And it's just so much more than that. And it's really important to touch on mental health because people going into their home and checking on them also gives their children just peace of mind as well. That's great. That and someone's checking you, on them. I appreciate you bringing that up. And it's true. You become so bonded with your patients or clients. Yeah. You often know more about them than their family does. And you can yeah. and use that to your benefit and their benefit to deliver some messages and tell the families things that they may need to know yeah. that their loved and, ones definitely And they were very share. isolated, you know, in certain assisted living homes and independent living when they're, you know, there's COVID going on in there and they're stuck inside. They can't even see their family members or socialize within the building. That's great. Thank you. We do background check. Why it's so important to go with a licensed agency for private duty is we do background check all of our employees instead of you're getting someone off the street or you're getting someone on Craigslist or wherever it is. We background check to make sure that person does not have a record and they're a good person. 
So it's very important that the people that are going into your homes are background checked. That's great. And Thank we you. love having trusted partners like you guys. Sarah, what haven't I asked you that I should? I just think the adult children and the clients really need to do their homework. They have options. Um, you know, when they're discharged from a hospital or rehab, they're given, you know, one or two cards or one or two flyers with a company. But, you know, they need to really do their research and ask the questions download go to any website and make sure that they're asking the right questions and um, most websites have frequently asked questions section, exactly study them right yes. that's great yes. good takeaway thank you all right on to the nugget portion of the show betty soskin is living proof that age is just a number roll the tape for park ranger Family. betty reed soskin history is not just something in a book it's her life i'm generally looking to find ways to fill in the blanks of people who I come in contact with. 100 years old, now working remotely, okay, she still so captivates visitors at the Rosie because the Riveter National the Park the on San Francisco Bay, doing. telling the story of the women who built ships and airplanes during World War II, the white women personified by the famous poster, and the black women like Betty, whose contributions were once overlooked. The history as I had lived it was nowhere in sight, not one minute of it. The granddaughter of a slave, during World War II, Betty worked as a file clerk in a segregated unit. Married twice, she became a business owner, an activist, a musician, a mother, and at 85, a national park ranger. Because what gets remembered is determined by who's in the room doing the remembering. She's now a celebrity, having a school named after her, relishing in the signal her uniform sends. I still love this uniform, partly because there's a silent message to every little girl of color that I pass on the street. Making sure America knows all its history so it doesn't repeat it. Happy birthday, Betty. You are a real inspiration. Love that story. All right, ladies, on to the lightning round. There's an opportunity for Ooh. viewers to get to know y'all personally. Are you ready? Julie, I'm going to start with you and then we'll go around. Okay. Julie, where were you born and raised? Dallas, Texas. Sarah. Uh, Vin uh, Ventura, California. Welcome. Where'd you go to college? UT in Austin undergrad, followed by UT Southwestern Medical School for master's in PT. The Longhorns. Where'd you go to college? Or Park. Uh, can you write in cursive, Julie? I think I can. Not pretty. Can you write in cursive? Absolutely. Ever lived abroad? Yes. Where? Australia. Ever lived abroad? No. no. Um, ever been arrested? No, Brian. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, a great no, question. Actually, no, I haven't. No, I have not. Um, adrenaline junkie? Used to be pre-kids. Not at all. Not so much. Sarah? No. I'm a scaredy cat. Favorite cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's of mine, course. too. Of course. Yes. Or Frankenberries when it's October. Wow. Can you drive a stick shift? No. Yes, I was, I was, was taught to drive with a stick shift. Not a girl. Uh, do you own a cowboy hat? No, but I own cowboy boots. Do you own a cowboy hat? I do not. Um, favorite ice cream, Julie? Peppermint. Rocky Road or coffee? iPhone or Android? iPhone, even though you know I'm terrible with tech. You're awful. I know. iPhone. Um, night owl or early to bed, early to rise? Early to bed, early to rise. <laughs> oh, I'm a night owl. You don't sleep at all. Yeah, I don't sleep at all. All Since. right, let's keep this short. Uh, Julie, strangest home health story? We, I used to follow up on all these phone calls with our patients, and I have cute stories of, you know, I get to know a senior, and it's his wife's anniversary, so he's, I give him advice on what to do, and it's really a cute relationship. But the funniest thing, or oddest thing, I would say, is when I'm on a follow-up call seeing how a patient's doing, one lady asked if I would hold while she goes to the bathroom with her on the line. What are friends for? Little Sarah, strangest uh, private duty story. Well, we had a caregiver go into a home, and this isn't the strangest. I have so many, but the caregiver wasn't comfortable going back because she said the house was dirty. So I went to the house myself the next day to check, and there was black mold all over his, his bathrooms. It was really bad. And he was on 24-hour care, and we I told him he had to go stay in a hotel until we could get it fixed. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and knowledge today. I appreciate you being Thank on the you show. For having us. The viewers want to reach you, Julie. What's the best way for the viewers to reach you? www.higherstandardshomehealth.com.
And Sarah? Uh, www.cambridgecaregivers.com. Sharp. Um, and if you are interested in viewing this or any other of our podcasts, you can find us online at iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, and anywhere else you get your podcast by searching manchesterlivingpodcast.com. If there's anything I can ever do for you, call me directly. Don't go back to Google. Thanks for watching today.